Okay, this is intended as the uh, last video in the series. Uh, it's slightly out of sequence. Don't worry about that. You'll see it posted before. Uh, there's, a, there's a couple of others that will go in front of it. I'm just doing it because it's one of the easiest ones to do. It's just rounding uh, off with all the sections that are, uh, are they're of importance to the game, but they're not uh, as important as the, the main sections like the phases. So if we look at arms and armour, basically certain types of weapons, etc. can give you benefits in... Um, combat we've got the uh, effects of shooting weapons important things as strengths and ranges all different types of weapons that throwing weapons as well you've got armor the fact that armor improves your defense um, command companies these are where companies have had upgrades applied to them like captains and uh, banners and things and uh, they basically give a an advantage to that particular company within the formation. Remember when you take that. Remember, command company's got to be up front in 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 the within the uh, formation. It mustn't be lurking at the back. It's just to be thematically correct. And just remember when you're taking casualties and things, make sure that you. Um, don't take the uh, the upgraded units first, or then you'll lose the benefits of them. Um, so captains and things like that give you um, they allow the actual formation to to take the captain's fight value, which is higher than the base troops. Um, banners allow you to re-roll uh, panic text tests. Um, You've got things like army banners. These are, but we haven't got any in this particular game. Uh, but these are very sort of expensive upgrades. Um, they can give you a, a special heroic action called heroic advance. And it follows the same rules as heroic charge, except that any formation that has a banner and was in 12 inches of the army banner may move first not just the army banners formation so it, it, as i said it's a bit more advantageous because you can move multiple formations um there are other upgrades like horn blows and drummers taskmasters etc but we won't cover special rules um a lot of units have these little rules attached in their profile uh, for example, like Pathfinders, these units can move faster through uh, difficult terrain, uh, depending on what type of Pathfinder it is, whether it's woodland or mountain. Um, there's even a Master Pathfinder. You've got things like Terror, some creatures like um, Balrogs and uh, Nazgul, actually, um, difficult to attack because people have to overcome the sheer terror of the creature um, inflicts on them before they can actually fight it um, so there's a lot of those but they're very situational and they depend on what units are in your particular scenario done heroic heroes uh, epic heroes we haven't covered them there's a slight correction. I did say that Ugluk and Grishna are, are epic heroes on the uh, evil side of this scenario. That is not true. The only epic hero is Aoma. An epic hero can be infantry and cash or cavalry, depending on whether um, it's with a cavalry formation or with an infantry formation. In this case, Aoma's infantry in the manual, but he's deployed on the board as a cavalry unit. Um, epic heroes move differently from everyone else. Um, so basically at the start of the movement phase you can uh, move uh, to any friendly um, you can move to any friendly command company within 18 inches displacing one model uh, as you do that so for example Aoma there could move 
oh, I'm not going to pull him out of the tray. You could move all the way down here to join this uh, command company here, and this this captain would be displaced into uh, another tray. Well, we don't probably have it. We'd have to deploy an extra tray for that. Um, Other things, um, epic heroes have epic actions. Now, unlike heroic actions, these can be taken at any point within a, a, the relevant phase. Uh, so you don't have to declare it at the start. So if you're in the middle of a charge phase, I could declare an epic charge um, as the charge was actually taking place rather than sort of uh, having to declare it up front at the start of the phase. Um, these heroic actions are different. Uh, they, they sort of give things like an epic charge gives you a plus two fight. Um, in the fight phase, uh, your epic defenses. Formations defenses increase by two. Epic rage increases the strength of a company. Um, well, there's others like epic sacrifice, shot and strike. Um, epic actions use might in the same way as heroic actions do. Um, there's a few other special rules for counsellors, inspiring leaders, overlords, touched by destiny, but we won't cover them in detail. Another section that's very uh, situational is magic. Uh, uh, there are not that many magic users in Middle-earth, but... Um, they've been given a lot more capabilities than they had um, in the books or in, or in the films um, so I'm not going to cover that um, right. there's quite a few spells in the manual okay and well, that's pretty much it really um, there are some very oddball things like if you're playing certain scenarios you can think, use things like fortunes and fate so they could be built into a, a scenario or if you're creating your own one you can you can generate these I've never used any of these or seen them used but yeah so you're playing a certain number of points to get some sort of um, advantage that applies to your entire army or whatever. Alright, that'll do for that one.